On August 13, 2016, a civil unrest began in the Sherman Park neighborhood in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, which was sparked by the fatal police shooting of a 23-year-old civil smith. Six businesses were set on fire during the civil unrest. Three of them were destroyed and three suffered heavy damage. One was a BP gas station, an O'Reilly Auto Parts store, a liquor store, a Jet Beauty Supply store, and this also includes the BMO Harris Bank. According to a Milwaukee Fire Department official, the riots caused around $5.8 million worth of damage to the neighborhood businesses. In the weeks following the civil unrest, community conversations identified the need for safe, welcoming neighborhood spaces, and certain leaders in the community decided to take matters into their own hands in order to foster change. In the hopes of moving forward, the idea of the Sherman Phoenix was born. Sherman Phoenix sits in the previously fire-damaged BMO Harris Bank building. It hosts 29 small businesses offering prepared foods, wellness services, and arts and cultural activities. I was able to have a conversation with a couple of the small business owners. My name is uh, Dr. Lakia Jones, mm -hmm. and I am the um, CEO and owner of Amrite Counseling Services. Um, we provide mental health and uh, substance abuse treatment for children, adolescents, adults, couples, and families, along with an array of family support services. My name is Lauren Schultz, and I'm the owner of Purple Door Ice Cream. I think there's like 25 to 30, you know, small business vendors there now um, who make up this community within this shared space, but it's also the community of Sherman Park and the residents and just this meeting place where people can feel a connection and just gather a gathering space for the community to just help heal what happened in 2016 and you know moving moving beyond that. That unrest really affected businesses in the area because many buildings were burned down at the time. Now that was just two years ago. We bring us to today and we're still dealing with racism at its high, right? So we got the Jacob Blake situation. We have so many, we are Breonna Taylor. These things continue to impact the Black community. As much as the bad comes out of it, the good is that we sit down and we figure out ways to best assist and best help our community more now than ever. How has COVID-19 affected your business? Well, it hasn't been the best of years, <laughs> but it has. Um, it has, it's been very difficult as a food-based business, especially at the beginning, just trying to transition to how we could still sell ice cream. You know, no one is allowed to sit down in our space anywhere now, you know, all the different locations. Um, so it's been, how can we transfer that to all just take out? Um, and so we've been trying to, create products and packages and things like that, that lend more to take this home. So like, here's a Sunday kit to go, right? Like, so you can make your ice cream sundaes at home. We've been trying to come up with new flavors and new products just to keep people interested because it has been, it's been, it's been a hard, it's been a hard year. One of the things that we're so used to when we think about mental health and we think about counseling services, that is uh, something that we're used to coming in person, seeing our ther therapist in person. And COVID put a halt to that, right? It put a huge halt to providing services in person. But what it did in a positive note is it allowed access, additional access in a very different way to those who may be in need of counseling. So what telehealth did is, is it said, you know what? Drop all the barriers, right? There's so many barriers to people receiving mental health, especially African-American people, right? Who, who statistically need it the most, unfortunately, right? So telehealth now, those barriers have been dropped and it allows equal access to anyone in need of mental health care. So I know that there's a bad side to COVID, right? Unfortunately, there's our people losing lives. From a business standpoint for us, we now get to offer mental health services and substance abuse services to individuals who may have not um, gotten our services before. I think Milwaukeeans are some of the most loyal people that I have met. And, and I see that in the Sherman Park neighborhood as well. It's just this, this loyalty of community, this loyalty of friendship, this loyalty of businesses. Um, and so while that time was difficult, and I think that people still kind of come back around to say, well, we're going to embrace what we have and how we can move forward because it's, it's just that loyalty of being a Milwaukeean. I would definitely describe the Sherman Park neighborhood as family. 
we come together. Uh, I am not only a business owner in the Sherman Park area, but I'm a resident in the Sherman Park area. So I live right here in the Sherman Park area, um, a, a bike away from, from the business. And so I really look at Sherman Park as a family. We are a family who um, statistically deal with a lot, right? Um, there is um, poverty within our community. There is violence within our community. There is um, other statistical things that we read about, right? That's the negative stuff. But what people don't see is the positive. The positive is that we come together, we're a strong community. We, um, we tackle the forces, right? We help one another. We um, are in this together. And that's what I really love about the Sherman Park community.